And a good evening to you from Pepsi Stadium on the campus of North Greenville University. It's the final day of pool play here in this 2018 Division II Men's NCCAA Soccer Championship on a 44 degree dreary evening. We wrap up pool play with the two seed Kansas Christian Falcons coming in at 11-6-1 taking on the six seed Kentucky Christian University Knights coming in at 12, five and two. Chris Shima, glad to be with you once again. Let's meet the starting lineups and then we'll tell you about all the different scenarios for today's game. We'll start with the two seed Kansas Christian Falcons and head coach Guy Fadalala. He starts in front of the net to Joe Race. Also starting today for the Falcons. Number two, Talong Thang. Number three, Lucas Souza. Number four, Guy Oliveira. Number six, Matthias Alonso. Number nine, four, Guy four, Lima. Number 11, Steven Castaneda. Number 16, Joshua Franco. Number 26, Zaki Mosevi. Number 27, Mohammed. And number 29, Jordi Lagos. That's the starters today for Kansas Christian. Now the starters for Jeremy Miller and his Kentucky Christian Knights. In front of the net today is 99, Micah Atkins. Also starting today, number four, Brandon Miranda. Number seven, Dylan Albright. Number eight, Austin McGee. Number nine, Nathan Campbell. Number 11, Mike DeWald. Number 12, Seth Boland. Number 15, Reed Rousey. Number 22, Brandon Hardesty. Number 23, Isaiah Jones. And number 24, Connor Vincent. Kansas is in the blue and Kentucky is in the red. So here are the scenarios. Kentucky has a chance to win outright if they are able to win today. The goal difference is the first tiebreaker because they tied with Trinity. So head-to-heads don't really mean much. So if Kentucky wins today and they win by two goals or more, they would advance. Right now, their goal differential is even because in their lone pool play game, they tied against Trinity one-to-one. -one. Trinity, on the other hand, has a one goals against advantage. So they're plus one. So right now, Kentucky's even, they're uh, and Trinity is plus one. Trinity has four points, so Kentucky must win today, and they must win by two goals or more. The maximum, by the way, is three for the goal differential. So, uh, you know, to avoid teams trying to run it up on their opponents, that's that's actually a, a really good uh, little subset to that tiebreaker. But so, if Kentucky wins three to two today, they would go into a tie with Trinity, and that would take us to the next tiebreaker, which is goals against, and that's where Kentucky has a big advantage assuming things go well today. Because Trinity allowed four goals in their two pool play games and Kentucky has only allowed one. So all of these different scenarios are what's at stake. So head-to-heads are irrelevant and Kansas Christian, by the way, has been eliminated. There's nothing they could do to uh, get enough points to win even if they win today. So Kansas Christian can play spoiler and Kentucky Christian with a lot to play for again here on this final day of pool play. They need to win by two goals or more, and if they only win by one goal, they need it to be low score, a low-scoring game, a 2-1 kind of a game. Right now, they are plus three in goals against against Trinity. So uh, as far as play-by-play -play today, it's going to be kind of just going over that a few times. Uh, the average person watches maybe 20, 30 minutes, so I'm going to update that pretty frequently today. So <laughs> stay, with, stay with me, folks. It is right now Kansas on the ball, and Kansas coming off a heartbreaker on Tuesday, losing 4-3. to three. It was an incredible game that Kansas and Trinity played on Tuesday. It's the best one in the two years that I've seen it. And they're trying to start fast again on the near side with Castaneda trying to get things going. Kentucky and Trinity played a defensive struggle yesterday in the pouring rain. It's, believe it or not, still raining, by the way. 
Uh, certainly not to the degree, even close to the degree it was raining before, uh, the last two days that is. Uh, it's just a very light, misty rain that's still hanging on here in the upstate of South Carolina. The temperatures are expected to be down into the 30s today uh, by the end of our second game. Dylan Albright plays it in and it's knocked out. So again, all those scenarios for Kentucky are what's in the back of their mind today. They've got to go for goals and they've got to play good defense at the same time. So you got to bring guys ahead here in this game, and you also have to uh, guard against the counterattack. It's an interesting scenario, and uh, firing it over on that far side, the uh, first attempt, I believe that was Isaiah Jones over on the far side, and it goes for a goal kick. It'll be interesting to see how Jeremy Miller plays it. Ty does nobody anything, so they gotta go for it. And if you're the Falcons, this is the second year that the Falcons have been in this tournament, and they want to win a game. They did not win last year against the number one seed in pool play. They don't want to leave as the number two seed this year without a victory. So don't think that, you know, Kansas Christian has the buses warmed up and they're ready to go. They've got a lot to play for here today. Did that really take me three minutes? <laughs> We're in the fourth minute, so. Both teams settling in. We saw that chance from Isaiah Jones, I believe, over on the far side for Kentucky and Kansas yet to get much going on the attack here in the early stages. Don't forget, folks, if you have any questions on anything, you can use the hashtag NCCAA Soccer on Twitter. I'm be glad to chat with you, uh, but you got to use that hashtag on Twitter because that's the only thing that I can keep my eyes on while still watching the game. Kentucky and Trinity level at one. They played 110 minutes yesterday. What kind of energy do they have? That's Lima. Played to Alonzo now on the near side. It's Thang. This is Castaneda. And that was the kind of defense that we saw both teams, Trinity and Kentucky. There were just there were no through balls. There were very little. Seth Boland scored a goal on a free kick for the lone goal yesterday for Kentucky against Trinity. Seth Boland's ninth of the season and his 37th in his career. Goal kick upcoming. Micah Atkins, 1.51 goals against average, 77% save percentage, seven clean sheets. And folks, I spent the bulk of my afternoon calling volleyball, which means my voice is about half of what it's been the last couple of days. So bear with me if I take a few more pauses here today. Oliveira, ball deflected. That's Albright, Dylan Albright wide to the left. So a goal kick to come for Dejoe Dos Reis. Freshman 1.20 goals against average, 52 saves on the season, three clean sheets, and Kentucky Christian has given us multiple pronunciation opportunities of the Joe Doss race. So I'm I'm going with the most recent one. He's gonna have a goal kick here, and you can see Kentucky trying to force the tempo. Tired legs after playing 110 minutes yesterday, folks. So Kentucky, they really want to get something going here in this first half. Again, they need to win by two goals. If they win, but they win by one goal, then they need to play good defense here today. That's the simple explanation that I probably should have gave you earlier. <laughs> Trouble getting on the ball, Jones. Counter attack on the far side for the Falcons. Franco trying to get it going. They're looking on the near side for Castaneda, but the defense is there. Brandon Miranda, one of the guys on the back line with Reed Rousey, Brandon Hardesty, and Connor Vincent. I want to give those guys a few minutes in this broadcast because they played so well against Trinity. 
All Trinity had to do was win yesterday, and this would be a consolation game for both teams. But uh, Kentucky did enough to put themselves in position here to have a shot. And that's really all you want here on this final day of pool play is to be in position to control your own destiny. Atkins dives for it after the through ball went in. There is no win today. If you were around yesterday, the folks from Grayson probably more so than everybody in Kansas City, but it was a howling win that changed direction four or five times during that evening. Sent into the box by Miranda. And it looked like that was Albright who tried for the header, couldn't quite come up with it. So another goal kick to come. We're in the eighth minute. I want to remind you, Men's Soccer National Championship brought to you by our friends at Pepsi. Located right here in the upstate, Pepsi delivers an array of Pepsi products you know and love. Pepsi, crisp, smooth, and refreshing. Chris Sheeman, in about half of my voice, glad to be with you here tonight. Temperature was 44 degrees at the start of this one, so not as bad as we thought it would be. Thang trying to get around. Kansas, dangerous attack. We saw it on display on Tuesday in that 4-3 loss. Kansas had the shot advantage against Trinity 14-13. Trouble there on the far side for Mosavi, and that'll be a turnover. He wasn't listed as a starter. Correction, that was Mohammed. So Mohammed now gets back on the ball. Lagos. So many different pieces for Guy Fidalala. Opportunity there for Lima. And again, that back line for Kentucky who has played so well here in the tournament. Trying to get the counter going was Miranda and it's taken back by Fang. Miranda, the left back. Is it that's Bolin, I believe. And it was Mike DeWald, my apologies. Bolin tried to get on the ball. And a foul is called. The winner plays in the national, well, excuse me, if Kentucky wins and I give you all the scenarios and they take care of all those tiebreakers that they need to get past Trinity. Then they're in the championship game. The men's championship will be at 5 p.m. Eastern time, and that will be on Saturday. Kansas playing for pride here today. Chance to win a game in the national tournament. Something they're not taking lightly as you see him on the attack here. It's Castaneda. Plays it back for Alonzo, and that'll be wide to the right. So another goal kick for Micah Atkins upcoming. Eleventh minute, and neither team with a real significant look. A couple of shots. Dylan Albright trying to get through. Good defense for Souza to knock it away. Kentucky stays with it though. Cross in, looking for Bolin. Knocked out again. Another foul is called. This time it's on Kansas, so they're gonna have to bring guys back and get set up for this play. Brandon Miranda will take the free kick from, say, 45 yards out. Booms it into the box. Defense is there. Albright, too strong. Oh, 
So 12th minute, another goal kick for Doss Race. The freshman from Brazil, we talked about it. Kansas, a lot of players from Brazil on their roster. Castaneda, good defense again for Kentucky. Sent forward on the other side, it's Mohammed. Mohammed, far side of center circle. Fang on the near side, and it's going to be off his foot and out of play. Kentucky Christian went unbeaten in Mideast play for the second straight year, only allowed two goals in region play this year. That's a record for the entire region. They lost Seth Boland for about a month with a broken arm. He's back in the mix, scoring that goal against Trinity yesterday in that uh, in the tough conditions that those teams had to play in. Goal kick to come for DeJoe Doss Race. Dylan Albright, top of the box, flicked out. Trying to get on it is Jones. Ball into the box, looking for Bolin. And he crosses it to the near side, but nobody is there. Kansas trying to get their counter going. Castaneda. Lima. Correction, that's uh, Thang. Thang long ball looking for Lima. Unable to come up with it. Jordy Lagos applying some pressure on Miranda. Kentucky stays with it. Long ball on the near side. Looking for Albright, and that will go out of play. It'll be a throw for Kansas. 14th minute. Taken right back by Austin McGee. McGee from Franklin, Kentucky, a freshman playing in his first national tournament. Dylan Albright called for the foul. So it'll be a free kick for the Falcons. Falcons wrapping up their season here today, 11-6-1. We'll finish both years since starting in 2017 with winning records. Ahmed tried to make something happen. It's cleared out again. Seth Bolin with a little flick for Albright. Albright not able to get on the ball. But like I said, for Kansas, they really want to get a win in this national tournament. They don't want to be seated one last year and two this year and come up empty both years. Mike DeWald got hit. And here's a really good opportunity now. This is about that same spot where Kentucky scored off the free kick from Seth Bolin yesterday. So here in the 16th minute, first real good set chance for Jeremy Miller and company. Miller's in his seventh year at the helm of the Knights program. And come to Grayson, Kentucky, and you come there expecting to compete for national championships. Brandon Miranda's gonna take it. Seth Bolin goes into the box, three-man wall. Miranda curves it, punched out Doss Race, and cleared out by the defense. So Kansas escapes the first dangerous attempt by Kentucky off of a set piece. Turnover, long run over on that far side, but it's won back by the Falcons, at least momentarily. Falcons' attack is so deadly, 57 goals coming into the tournament, now 60 on the year. That leads Division Two. Kentucky, not too shabby themselves, 45 goals coming in, 46 now on the year, and that is third best. Lagos on the far side, Franco. And that'll be knocked away. So 
Zaki Mosavi will walk out, take the throw. And the v defense playing with it right now for the Falcons. Kansas Christian started the year 3-5-1, and one, won their last eight games coming into the tournament. Here's Lagos. Lagos trying to make a move, and that kind of dancing ain't going to work against Kentucky's back line, at least not for the most part. Kentucky still in some danger here, though, as the Falcons still come up. Is that still in play? It is. Thang gets on it, sends it into the box, but it'll hit the top of the netting, and it'll be a goal kick. We want to thank everybody who's partnered with us to bring you the NCCAA National Tournament, Spinks, our Mark, Ponsecours, Integra Bank, and Pepsi. Chris Sheeman, glad to be with you here in the 18th minute. No score yet. Again, this game, Kentucky needs to win. They need to win by two goals. If they win by only one, then they need to have a low scoring game. The first tiebreaker is because Kentucky and Trinity tie, the first tiebreaker is goal differential. Right now it's plus one for Trinity. So Kentucky needs to win by two today. Their uh, plus minus is at zero. And if they only win by one, they can have a low scoring game and they can still, and that's the way this one's looking, although <laughs> the way Kansas likes to do things late, you just never know. There's a foul called there on Kansas, so it'll be another opportunity, a little further out this time for the Knights. So Kentucky wins by one, and it's a low scoring game. They advance to the championship game. Kentucky wins by two, they win as well. This time it is Seth Bolin who will take it. 35 yards out, low ball, and it's misplayed by uh, Doss Race, but he's able to get on the ball, just barely. That was real close to going over the line. And Doss Race shaking up. And Seth Bolin is good on those set pieces. Do we have a replay on that? Have you shown it yet? I see this myself. Yeah, let's do it again while they look at Doss Race so I can get a look at it. I'm not going to be able to see the line from there. Oh, man, you guys have a space heater over here. Yeah, it didn't. Oh, man, right there. See, it, it looks so close, but I don't think it went over. It's hard to tell from this vantage point. I didn't know. They, they're hogging the space heater over there. I'm getting none of that. I got the hand warmers, guys. It's okay. Don't feel too bad. So we're going to step aside here for just a moment while they attend to the Joe Doss race, and hopefully for Kansas, he'll be okay because... He is their, well, their main keeper. We'll take a break, come right back. So 20th minute in to this final game in uh, Pool B. And Doss Race got right up all of a sudden. I'm not sure if he was just shaken up or what, but he looks fine right now. So Kentucky Christian almost scoring the first goal. Albright trying to get away, and that leg came up a little bit too high, I think, for the official. So a foul call. Doss Race comes out to take the free kick. And you can see Kentucky is pushing ahead. They want to get a goal here early after playing 110 minutes yesterday. Franco keeps possession. Now this is Lagos. Back to Franco. For Kansas, they're looking on the far side for Hamid. Hamid cross into the box, and it comes right to Micah Atkins.
Header by Alonzo. Castaneda. So dangerous all year. Punched out by Micah Atkins as Castaneda took the cross and it curved. Atkins wanted to be sure we have our first corner kick now of the evening. Matthias Alonzo, three goals, seven assists on the year, had a goal in the 4-3 loss against Trinity. Jogs out. From the corner spot, Alonzo sends it into the box and that was a low ball staying with it is Franco. So they'll keep possession back to Mosavi. This is the key. Taken back again by the defense for Kentucky. Trying to get that counter attack and that ball. Kentucky, or excuse me, Kansas did just enough to frustrate that pass. 22nd minute, no score yet. Kentucky wins by two, and they win the group. That's a low knuckle shot by Mo Hamid. And no trouble for Atkins there. So another goal kick to come. Chris Shima, glad to be with you here at Pepsi Stadium on the campus of North Greenville University. This is certainly not where we expected to be three days in a row, but the folks here, as I mentioned last night, have been so helpful and hospitable to open up their doors when a lot of them probably should have had three days off. So a big thanks to everybody here. We can't thank them enough for everything they've done. We're going back to Bob Jones. I don't think there's been an official announcement, but we should be going back to Bob Jones uh, for the women's semifinals tomorrow, and then maybe, <laughs> still a maybe on that. I'll be there calling the game from a feed. <laughs> If not, most likely on Saturday for the men's championship. Again, uh, check the nccaa.org and the championship page for all of those schedules and everything. Mohammed with the deflection, so second corner kick to come here for Kansas Christian. Matthias Alonso again jogging out there to take it. Twenty-third minutes. Alonzo able to clear out. Kentucky, of course, you can say this for any game that any team plays all year. The ideal number of goals allowed today is zero for Kentucky. The uh, first tiebreaker is goal differential. And right now, Trinity is plus one in that category. Trinity has allowed four goals, though. That's going to be way over the crossbar and a goal kick to come. So the scenarios for Kentucky, they can win. If they win by one, as long as it's a uh, low scoring affair. Even a 3-2 to two score in favor of Kentucky would get them through. So in, in the scenario where they only win by one goal and we go to that uh, fourth tiebreaker, the uh, second being head-to-head, -head, which doesn't factor in because Trinity and Kentucky tied. Good ball by Alonzo. Over on the far side, they're looking for Hamid again. Mohamed. Good run, just outside the box. Zaki Mosavi trying to cross it in. It's deflected out, so Falcons will throw over on the far side. Alonzo chips it near side to Thang. Thang with the run to the middle. Again, it's Alonzo. Alonzo fires it right over to Lima, and Lima, an awkward hit on it. It'll go for a goal kick. Right. 
So a goal kick to come here for Mike Atkins. That's actually going to be taken by one of the defensive guys. I believe that's Connor Benson taking the goal kick. Castaneda gets on the ball. I understand that uh, there is a, a bit of a hum going on right now. And uh, that's from the lighting, actually, here on the campus of North Greenville here at Pepsi Stadium. All those lights, which, by the way, I saw the lights from a mile and a half away coming in today. Uh, the lights were on. Uh, I came a little bit later because I was doing volleyball, and you can they're very visible. But they're also uh, what's creating that little hum. And uh, my voice is not as powerful as it was the first two days, guys, so... Uh, uh, you're going to hear it a little bit more, maybe. So a foul here on Kentucky. Kansas with an opportunity. Lima's on the ball. And I can't see who else. It might be Souza. It is taken by Souza, and it's going to be wide to the right and out of play. So Lucas Souza, one of the center backs with a shot, but it goes wide to the right. No harm done again. Twenty seventh minute. You see the time left here in the first half. Can Kentucky get a goal here? I mentioned it in the beginning. It'll be interesting to see how Jeremy Miller manages it. He's brought guys up. They're certainly going after it here today, which they need to do. But at the same time, they just played 110 minutes in pretty lousy weather yesterday. Lago sends it to the near side. Castaneda can't get there. It's a little bit long as they were looking for him. So it'll be Kentucky trying to get on the ball was Miranda trying to get the counter going, I should say. Now he wins the throw. Albright comes up. And Castaneda gets tripped up. So foul on Brandon Miranda there. And it looks like it'll be Thang to take this free kick. The freshman from right there in Kansas City, Kansas. Kansas Christian is from, I believe, the official place is Overland Park, Kansas, which is a suburb of the Kansas City, Kansas metro area. It'll be Souza instead to take it, headed out. Alonzo turns on it. They're looking for Lima on the near side. Lima tries to save it in. Ball into the box, and it's fired, but wide to the right by Castaneda. Castaneda, who leads Division Two with 22 goals on the season, so far, nothing yet here in the tournament. Hunter Gullett, who started yesterday's game against Trinity, comes in for Kentucky. See what everybody's talking about at visitgreenvillesc.com for beautiful landscapes to a small town Main Street. It's no wonder people from all across the world are visiting. Check out Greenville, South Carolina. And if you're a Kentucky fan and your team is able to win the pool, looks like it's going to be a really nice weekend to come out for the championship game that will take place Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. There's no path forward, as I mentioned, for Kentucky because of that tie yesterday. Trinity wins if it's a tie today or a Kansas win, or a Kentucky win, and all those scenarios that I've talked about already. Ball into the box. That'll be headed back. Here's Thang. 30th minute, nearing 15 left to go here in this first half. I gotta think it's crucial for the Knights to try to get a goal here in this first 45. Again, they need to win by two. Right now, it's looking like, the, 
if they did end up winning by one, that they would have that tiebreaker. This is shaping up to be a low-scoring game, but that's what we thought about Trinity and Kansas on Tuesday, and they scored six goals in a 30-minute span in the second half. So don't assume anything if you're Kentucky. Ball into the box for the Knights. They're playing on the far side. That ball's going to be deflected by Kansas, and we should have a corner kick here. Miranda's been taking him, and he's going to jog out to the corner spot on the far side of your screen. Set piece chances in this tournament have been so huge. So Brandon Miranda. Five assists on the season to go along with three goals. We'll take the corner from the far side. Ball in and it's headed out by the defense. Good job there by the Falcons. Olin trying to get on the ball. Miranda on that far side will send it into the box. Still danger for the Falcons, but they finally clear here. 32nd minute, 13 and a half left to play here in this first half. Halftime will take the uh, full break. The rain is lighter today, but it's somehow still falling, if you can believe it. Castaneda on the far side, it's cleared out. Good defense, Austin McGee there on the play. Last year, neither one of these teams won in pool play. Kansas lost to Trinity and Bob Jones. Kentucky lost to Pensacola and Providence. Kentucky, four points and some help gets them into the championship game. Kansas has been eliminated, but looking for that first national win. Tough hit again by Lima off the ball from Lagos. Lima has not been accurate so far today. So another goal kick to come for Mike Atkins. This is a Kentucky team that played its toughest schedule according to Coach Miller, of the, at least while he's been there. Lima trying to get on the ball again. Kentucky sends it forward. Kentucky started the season one and three against tough opponents. Ohio Christian, Shawnee State, and NAIA. Campbellsville, another NAIA. And what Miller said that they did was drop five easy wins off of their schedule and replace them with five more challenging teams. And it's all for right now. The whole point of it was to have them in position where they could play for the national championship and they do control their destiny. They need things to go a certain way, but they're well in control. Ball high in the air, aggressive play by Atkins and he's able to pick it up. Inside the 35th minute now, less than 11 to play here in this first half. Miranda on the near side, the left back with some room. And that pass is gonna go over the line and out of play. Foul is called as Kentucky player hit the deck, that's DeWald. Miranda will take it from 50 yards out. We saw a goal from this spot yesterday by Pensacola against Bob Jones last night. Pensacola won by a, uh, I believe, three to one margin. That ball was deflected out, so another corner kick inside 10 minutes to go now here in the 36th minute. And an opportunity 
again for Miranda and the Knights on a set piece. This is the third corner kick of this first half for Kentucky. Kansas has had one or two as well. Miranda sends it in, headed into the back of the net. And Kentucky strikes first. Checking the number. Reed Rousey is the man who got the head on it. And his second goal of the season, first here in the national tournament. And in the 36th minute, it's 1-0. So Reed Rousey the big defender and the senior, one of the captains, no doubt, on this team for Jeremy Miller. So as of right now, Kentucky is in the championship game. They are currently tied with uh, Trinity in terms of goal differential at plus one apiece but they would have the tiebreaker over goals allowed. That's the next tiebreaker. And Kentucky so far has only allowed one. Trinity has allowed four. So right now, Kentucky is in the championship game. If this score would hold, that would eliminate Trinity. And it would be the Knights to advance out of pool B. Basically, as I mentioned, Kentucky can allow up to three goals as long as they, or excuse me, up to two goals, up to two goals as long as they win by at least one. Nice header, and there's a pep in the step now for the Knights. Isaiah Jones on that header. Bolin had it taken away. Don't ever count Kansas out, though. They're... Attack is the best in the country. Lagos, top of the box, Lima. Lima has had a couple of looks, fires that in, but it's blocked by the center back, Jones. Cross into the box, headed out again by the Knights. And the Knights trying to get the counter going. Tripped up. Lagos with the defensive play. Knights stay with it, though. That's Bolin on the ball. Albright on the near side. Dylan Albright. Ball deflected. 38th minute, 719 left to play here in this first half. Alonzo. Castaneda looking to get it back on the one two. He and Lima. Castaneda trying to make a couple of moves. And again, that. That's not gonna work, that one-on-one -on -one stuff against Kentucky. Kansas is gonna have to figure something else out. So Reed Rousey scoring for the second time this year. Thang will inbound on the throw-in to Castaneda. Lima, back to Thang. Thang with the cross in. And Hamid came charging, but it was off the mark. Falcons stay with it, though. Lagos runs out of real estate, and that'll be knocked away. Mike DeWald, I believe, was over there. Throw in for the Falcons. 39th minute, nearing six left to play. And now a foul is going to be called on Kentucky and possibly a yellow card. And it is a yellow card. I couldn't see the uh, number. It might be DeWald. I'm not 100% sure on that, though. So an opportunity here as Mohammed 
Goes on the ball. Looks like this will be Lima to take the free kick. It's a uh, rare set peach chance today. Lima fires blocked by Atkins. So Atkins makes the nice play. Micah Atkins will drop kick it here. It's headed back. That was Alonzo on the header. Throw again for Kentucky. Miranda on the throw. Headed by Gullet. Lima unable to get his foot on it. And they were looking on the near side for Gullet. It was Kentucky. And the officials blow the whistle as the ball went over the line. So a throw here for Thang and the Falcons. Again, 1 0. And right now, this is enough for Kentucky to. Win Pool B and go to the championship game. They have to win outright in a low scoring game, which it appears to be right now. Franco. Alonzo on the near side. Thang. Here's Souza. Kentucky gets it back. That was Bolin, I believe. It's hard to see those numbers for Kentucky. It's kind of shiny. They're shiny numbers, so uh, it's kind of glaring off. But that is Seth Boland, number 12. That was Isaiah Jones playing it in. Ball into the box, Doss Race. And was shaken up earlier in the first half, but he appears to be okay. Reed Rousey off of a corner kick header. As Kentucky up 1-0. Final day of pool play. Bob Jones and North Central will play. North Central controls its own destiny. If they win against Bob Jones, they will go to the championship game out of pool A. Another foul on Kentucky. So another chance via the set piece. And this time it'll be Alonzo who will take the free kick here. 42nd minute. Two-man wall as Alonzo directs traffic from 35 yards out. Boots it on the curve. It's headed out. Might have been Hardesty. And the Knights trying to get the counterattack going, but the Falcons' defense is ready at center circle. Alonzo sends it to the near side, and pulling up on it was Thang. Inside three minutes left to go, 43rd minute. It's going to be a throw for Kentucky. Isaiah Jones with the throw. Taken back by the Falcons. Lima near side of center circle. It's Thang. Lima back to Thang. Now Lima again. Lima being pressured by, I believe, DeWald. Franco. This is Alonzo. Patient with it. Souza. Ball into the box. Nobody's there. It was deflected by Kentucky, though, so Atkins makes the wise decision coming up with the ball. 44th minute inside two to play here in this opening half. A good one for Kentucky. After playing 110 minutes yesterday, they really needed to get a goal here in the first 45, and they did. Still a lot of time left, though, and... As we know, that Falcons attack is so deadly. It 
does not take much to get them going. Lagos at center circle. Mosavi. That's Oliveira on the far side. Franco. On the near side, Alonzo. It's Thang. Back to him on the one two. And the defense for Kentucky able to hold again. We're nearing 155 minutes of action for this Kentucky defense, and they've allowed one goal. 45th minute, less than a minute to go. Again, we'll take a break. At halftime, the full 15. Trouble there on the ball, Miranda, but the rest of his teammates able there to uh, get back clean up. Lagos, now Lima. Lima fires wide to the right. That was his best shot of the day, though. Micah Atkins making a play on it, and with 15 seconds, there might be enough time for a corner here for Alonzo, who runs out there, fires it into the box. It's headed out. Still danger, and that's blocked by Atkins, shot by Souza, and the first half is going to come to a flurious end. So don't go anywhere, folks. Kentucky, as of right now, is in the championship game, but they got 45 minutes left to go against the Falcons' top attack in the country. Your score at halftime, it's Kentucky 1 and Kansas Christian 0. You're watching the 2018 NCAA Division II Men's Soccer National Championship from Greenville, South Carolina. We'll be back in 15. Welcome back to Pepsi Stadium, North Greenville University, the site of men's 2018 NCAA Division II pool play. We wrap up today, and we start with Pool B right now. Kentucky Christian leading Kansas Christian by a score of 1 to 0. And that's important for Kentucky because it puts them in the championship game. Chris Sheeman, glad to be back with you. If you're just joining us, I'll run through the uh, scenarios for you again. If Kentucky wins this game, they would be tied with four points with Trinity. So the uh, next scoring differential or the next tiebreaker, excuse me, is head to head. Well, they tied, so you can cancel that out. The next uh, tiebreaker after that, goal differential. And right now they're tied. Kentucky and Trinity are both plus one in that column. Uh, the uh, next tiebreaker, we would go to the fourth tiebreaker if the score holds what it is right now, which would be goals allowed. And Trinity has allowed four. So far, uh, Kentucky has only allowed one. Now, if Kentucky falls apart here and they give up three goals, but they still win, then we go to the fifth tiebreaker, which is goals scored. And assuming, as that shot is uh, right on target for the keeper to make the play, Atkins. So, assuming that would come into play. We'll just cross that bridge when we get there because I can't do any more math right now. <laughs> so, as of right now, all you need to know is that Kentucky is in the championship game as the winner of Pool B if it holds right now. Albright with the header comes to Doss Race. So both teams with an early chance. Now towards the end of that first half, Kansas really started knocking on the door with a little more regularity. The defense for Kentucky has been its usual uh, stifling self. Third in Division II are the Knights with a 1.50 goals against average, but uh, Kansas is the top attacking team. They have 58 goals, or excuse me, they have 60 goals on the year. That includes the three against Trinity. And as we know, Trinity's a pretty good defensive team too. So if they can score three against Trinity, they can score three against Kentucky, certainly. So Kentucky will need to play poised here in this final 45 minutes as they're going to be under the gun as you see the shot there from Franco. And again, Mike Atkins makes a play on it. And this is a Kentucky team 
that played 110 minutes yesterday in the 1-1 draw against Trinity. So what legs do they have left? They don't have a deep bench. So Jeremy Miller is gonna have to walk a couple of lines. For Kansas, this is an opportunity. They are eliminated. There's no path forward for them. But there is an opportunity here for Kansas to not only play spoiler as the higher seed, but also to get their first win in the national tournament. This second year program's been to the national tournament both years, yet to get a win though. Here's Alonzo sending it, top of the box, Lima, and it's cleared out by the defense for Kentucky there. That goes through, they were looking for Nathan Campbell. Good to see Campbell back out there, by the way. Ball deflected, Bolin coming out, Doss Race. Calmly gets it away from Bolin at the top of the box. Nathan Campbell, the senior from Nashville, Tennessee, was injured yesterday, tried to come back in in the second half, was limping a little bit, so they brought him off, but he is okay and he's out there right now wearing number nine for Kentucky. Castaneda can't get there on the near side. It'll be a throw. Learn, love, and lead for over 90 years. Bob Jones University has been equipping leaders to make a difference for the cause of Christ. Find out more info by visiting bju.edu. Off the back heel, that's Isaiah Jones. The through ball to Albright. Dylan Albright, sliding challenge there by Zaki Mosavi. Dylan Albright for Kentucky, seven goals, eight assists, and 22 points this season. Nothing yet here in the national tournament. They've been looking for him though. Doss Race came out. On that far side, they're looking for Thang. And Thang wins a throw, taken quickly. That's gonna go out of play. And again, a deflection. So Thang was there quickly with another throw. Alonzo. Ball into the box and on a couple hops, Micah Atkins makes a play on it. Six minutes into this second half, 51st minute overall. Kentucky controlling its own destiny and at least for right now, taking care of business, doing what they need to do, winning one nil. A tie in this game and Trinity advances to the championship game. Trinity was the runner up last year. And if Kentucky hangs on, wins this one, in a low scoring game by one goal or by two goals or more, then Kentucky's in the championship game. Have to go back, I looked on the website and they have a lot of the winners, but we'll have to go back and see if Kentucky has been in the championship game before. Talk to their folks, I'm sure they know well enough. Miranda has called for the foul, the right back, so a free kick just outside the box here for Kansas Christian. Here in minute 52. The Falcons trying to get something on the set piece against this tough Knights defense. Kansas Christian, the second seed at 11 6 and 1. Kentucky Christian, the number six seed at 12 5 and 1. Looks like that might be Juan Munoz, number eight, taking this. Curves it in, and that goes over the crossbar and out of play for a goal kick. Made things interesting. Atkins certainly was on high alert, but it does go for a goal kick. So Kansas Christian season will come to an end here in the national tournament after tonight. 
Still a chance though again for three points here in the national tournament. Franco, that's Lima. And it's taken back by Mike DeWall. On the near side, Dylan Albright. And that pass is behind his intended target. It was deflected though. So Nathan Campbell will give way. And it'll be a throw by Isaiah Jones. Lima Castaneda both on the ball. Pass was off the mark though. Kentucky gets back on it. Dylan Albright, top of the box. Sends it over to the left, and Doss Race comes up to make the play. Joe Doss Race. He's got a big leg on him as you see that ball land right near us. The attack fizzles, though. Kentucky, they're looking for a second goal here. They're not sitting back on this lead. Miranda, the ball deflected. Kentucky now will try for the counter attack here. Take it back by Jones. This is Miranda, and who gets the throw? It'll be the Falcons. Oliveira sends it back to Doss Race. That's headed back, Castaneda in a foot race, but the defense there. Franco, Osavi, Juan Munoz looking over on the far side. Headed out again. 55th minute, 35 left to play. Final day of pool play. Look out, Doss Race came out of the box and Oliveira wisely got rid of it. Doss Race has been living out of the box here in the second half and that one almost cost him if not for Guy Oliveira making the play. So a throw for Kentucky on the near side of your screen, Isaiah Jones, the freshman from Louisville. He'll get it back. And a turnover, counter attack is on. That was Alonzo on the near side. This is Castaneda. Castaneda, 22 goals on the season. Nothing yet here in the national tournament against these top defenses. And his pass off the mark. Kentucky can't get on the ball. Now they do. Kansas Christian, two seed coming from Kansas City, Kansas, and Kentucky Christian coming from Grayson, Kentucky. Grayson's a small little community just off the uh, interstate. That ball is low, no trouble there for Micah Atkins. I believe it was Lima again. Fifty-seventh minute, thirty-three and a half left to play. Grayson, if I had on the long run, that's fired into the back of the net. On the counterattack, it's the second goal for Kentucky. And again, with those jersey numbers, what they are, we'll wait for the official scorer to tell you who that was. Beautiful counterplay on that far side for Kentucky. And Everybody's trying to figure out who scored it. I really hope for the benefit 
of these young men that the soccer world takes a look at the way these jerseys are done because it's just pure torture for us to figure out who's on the field. And this is small college athletics. We don't have the manpower to have, you know, spotters and all of that. And nobody seems to know who scored it, though. So that's unfortunate. We'll, again, get official word at some point. But all you need to know if you're a Kentucky fan is that really benefits you now. It was nine, so Nathan Campbell is credited with the goal. That's his second of the season. Thank you guys for that. That's going to be punched out by Micah Atkins. So Nathan Campbell scoring for the second time this year. Came in the 57th, 21 minutes after Reed Rousey gave his team a 1-0 lead. So Kentucky is really in control now. Because right now they own both tiebreakers. So we're back to the number three tiebreaker, goal differential. And Kentucky's at plus two. And now Kentucky can allow, as long as they win the game, of course, as many as four goals. Maybe even five, as long as they win six to five. Austin McGee trying to get on the ball there and a turnover. Dylan Albright now. Albright trying to send it into the box and good defense that time by the Falcons. Albright's gonna get it back, but he's offside. So before the counterattack, I was talking about Grayson, Kentucky and if I had to tell you, if, if you're not familiar with the area, it's about halfway between Charleston, West Virginia and Lexington, Kentucky. Not too far from Huntington, West Virginia. And Kentucky again, with all the momentum, Seth Bolin was trying to drive it in. Look out. This is Jones on the ball. Franco on the counter attack. And through balls are not working against Kentucky's defense in this tournament. If Kentucky hangs on and they go to the championship game, whoever's watching this rebroadcast from Pool A, be on alert. The through balls have done nothing. <laughs> the Knights back line of Brandon Miranda, Reed Rousey, Brandon Hardesty, and Connor Vincent have not allowed any through balls. Sixtieth minute now, nearing thirty to go, and a foul is called. So Kentucky will get a free kick here. This NCCAA soccer tournament brought to you by our friends at Pepsi, crisp, smooth, and refreshing, and we thank them for their support. We're at Pepsi Stadium here in North Greenville campus of North Greenville University. Beautiful facilities here for this Division II program. Who have been very gracious to open their doors and let us back in after uh, the uh, rain and nastiness of the last three days, which is still continuing, by the way. But Hunter Gullet coming back in for the Knights. It will be Kentucky Christian to take this free kick here. In the 61st minute, ball into the box and Doss Race had to come up and make a play on it from his right. At center circle, that's Juan Munoz. Alonzo on the near side. Castaneda. They got to get him going. 
Get it back on the one, two, Castaneda. And again, the defense keying in on him, but a foul called. So another opportunity here for Kansas. Sixty-second minute, and the Falcons with an opportunity to get themselves back in it. Lima's on the ball. It'll be a four-man wall for the Knights. Munoz is also there. Lima will fire it, and it comes right to the keeper, Atkins, who barely had to move. Nothing on the set pieces today for the Falcons. Kentucky 2-0. On their way to winning Pool B. As the uh, game stands right now, as long as it stays low scoring, even if Kentucky concedes a goal, they're still in. We would go to the fourth tiebreaker, which would be goals allowed, and Kentucky would have that tiebreaker over Trinity. So Kentucky is looking, by the way. Brandon Gilmore doing some research for us and finding that Kentucky Christian has never been in the championship game. So this would be a first for the Knights. Our women's basketball team was in the championship game against Arlington last year. Well, this year technically, last academic year in March. Men's basketball had a decent showing in the national tournament. Good things happen when teams invest in their athletics, finding the right kind of student athletes. And that's what they have done in Grayson. And it's showing here tonight. This is a team that came out after playing 110 minutes, and they have more energy. There's a shot that comes right to Atkins. No trouble again as he goes low. I believe it was uh, Lagos over on the far side. Mohammed is stretching. I wonder if they'll bring him back into the game for Kansas. You see, too, a little bit, Kansas 11, 6, and 1, and certainly don't want to stir the pot too much, but I've lived in the Midwest, I've lived in the South, and the soccer in the South is just far and away better than the Midwest. At least that's my opinion. That's one guy's opinion, but you're kind of seeing the results of it here in this national tournament. Now it's the second straight year that Kansas Christian, although they're a second year program, seated in the top two. They were in the one seed last year and the two seed this year. And the top attack coming in. And they have not gotten anything here today against Kentucky. They did play well against Trinity. That was a heartbreaker for Kansas and that may have something to do with the energy. But Castaneda trying to get to the ball. Good, tough defense again. Defender falls down, Castaneda stays on it. He'll send it to the top of the box. Over on the far side, Lagos. This is Thang. Into the box, there's Lima with a little chip and on a couple of bounces. No trouble there for Micah Atkins. So if Kentucky hangs on here, 65 minutes in, and they're well on their way, they would meet the winner of Pool A, and there's still a chance for a three-way tie in Pool A, by the way. North Central controls its own destiny. If they win, they're in. If they lose, then all kinds of tiebreakers come in. Head to heads first, of course. On the counter attack, Kentucky again on the ball, Campbell. And it's sent back and fired well over the crossbar. And I was right, Mohammed is coming back in for Kansas. So Hamid returns here in the 66th minute. 
So at 7.30, it's Bob Jones in North Central. North Central wins. They go to the championship game. North Central actually goes to the championship game with a win or tie, by the way. Bob Jones wins, and then everybody's got three points. Bob Jones has allowed three goals. Pensacola has allowed two. Goal differential would be uh, North Central would have a slight advantage in that. Again, not if Bob Jones wins the game, though. Right now, goal differential in Pool A is plus one for both Pensacola and North Central. So if Bob Jones wins, then they might actually help Pensacola more than themselves. That's the kind of confusion that things can be created later on tonight. Kentucky taking care of business right now, and Doss Race is still out of the box. As that shot fired from some distance, but it'll go behind for a goal kick. Joe Doss Race, one of several Brazilians on the Falcons roster. Souza, Oliveira, Alonzo, Lima, Antonio. All Brazilians for Guy Fidolo. Here is Lima. Fresh legs of Hamid sending it, and that is blocked by Atkins. That shot was fired right at the crossbar, and it's going to set up a corner kick now for the Falcons. Alonzo's taken all of the corners. It looks like there's a different number jogging out there right now. I believe Franco. That's my best guess at it. Trying to make something happen. Lagos, and it's deflected again. Guys, does that look like number 16 to you? In blue? He's coming back in. I believe it is Franco. So Franco again, short corner this time to Lagos. This Kentucky defense has been something to watch. I mean, set pieces. They have really controlled things here in this tournament. 110 minutes yesterday, one goal against the Trinity team that scored four times against Kansas. And Kentucky here now, 69 minutes in, with a shutout. That's going to be a foul call there on Oliveira on the hard shot. They're going to bring out a card. It looks like it. Ol Olivera will pick up a yellow card here. And the card is shown. Free kick for Brandon Miranda. So what will essentially be a cross for Miranda. Miranda, five assists on the year. This is where he excels. Well, if Kentucky can get a third here, you can pretty much book it. Miranda chips it in. Doss Race punches it out. Wanted to be sure. So Miranda now will go to the corner spot. Kentucky scored its first goal on a corner in a 36 minute. Reed Rousey with the goal on the header. Sent in and the defense escapes. Hamid trying to get on the ball, start the counter attack. He's the only one up. Kentucky gets back on it. Now the Falcons take it away. Hamid on the far side of your screen. At center circle, it was Franco. Castaneda, 
Franco. Lima top of the box. Lima's been trying all day against this tough defense. That's going to be off of Mosavi. So a throw up coming. 71st minute now, less than 20 to play. Kentucky is, barring some kind of a miraculous collapse, at least going to hold that potential fourth tiebreaker just in case they do concede at least one goal. And we do have to go to the fourth tiebreaker. So that second goal was very important. And Kentucky, after 110 minutes yesterday, I got to give them credit on the conditioning because they are very crisp here today and have a lot of energy, understanding what's at stake, of course. Coming in for the Knights is Tyler Webb, number 17. Webb with some fresh legs getting on the ball. Webb into the box and he's gonna be called for the foul there. So it'll be a uh, free kick taken by Doss Race, the big leg on him. Six foot six for the freshman from Brazil. Guy Fedlala telling me that he really had to rebuild the roster after last year, a lot of departures, and Doss Race is one of the freshmen that he brought in, the Brazilian. Things are certainly looking up as long as that man is on the bench for Kansas. You talk about the difficulties, and it might be an easier region than some have to contend with, but a second year program going to Two different national tournaments is unheard of. Back-to-back -back years. First year they were in, second year they're in. I know they're going to be disappointed with the result, though. Last year, unable to get out of pool play, unable to get a win in pool play. And this year, at least for right now, it looks the same. Although they have a flair for the dramatic. 73rd minute, they're really going to have to get dramatic now. on the far side position and throw-ins trading about. For over 50 years, the NCCAA has been promoting outreach and ministry through athletic competition. You can learn more. Go to the nccaa.org. Chris Shima, glad to be with you here at Pepsi Stadium on the campus of North Greenville University. We're about uh, 30 minutes north of Bob Jones, drive time. Sub for the Falcons. Diego Loya coming in. So Loya checks in. Zaki Mosavi comes out. Franco. Center circle, it's Alonzo, back to Franco. Lagos. Taps it on the far side. Hamid. Alonzo sends it into the box. That through ball worked. Hamid and sliding to make the play is Miranda. Seventy-fifth minute now. Inside sixteen to go. Corner kick now for Kansas. This time it's Alonzo out there, I believe. Could also be Munoz. Grabbing it momentarily. Atkins couldn't get a handle on it though. and Defense able to clear. Ahmed and the Falcons still on the ball though as his shot was blocked. Loya, near side for Alonzo. Franco, Alonzo, Franco again 
Now Castaneda just trying to make something happen. He has been silenced here in this national tournament. Steven Castaneda tops in Division II with 22 goals coming in. Tops in points with 50. Six assists as well. It just hasn't worked out for him. Minute 76. Kentucky is on their way to their first ever championship game. That'll be played tomorrow, or excuse me, not tomorrow. Tomorrow's an off day for the men as we'll do the uh, women's semifinals. Long run, getting through. And no trouble for Doss Race. Good aggressive play by him. He's played aggressive here in this second half. I want to say that was Campbell again, but I believe Austin McGee had the run for Kentucky. And it's just really tricky. The uh, shiny black numbers on that dark red. It's more gray numbers and the way the light's hitting it, we just can't see much on that far side. So apologies in advance for that. That's off the foot of Webb. Taken back by the Falcons. Franco on the near side. Franco with some room. Leaves it for Castaneda. And Castaneda, the ball just got away from him. Knocked away. Throw by the Falcons. Castaneda takes it quickly. Franco gets it back on the one-two. Franco trying to find some space. And again, the defense is frustrating. Kentucky Christian. Micah Atkins has seven clean sheets on the year. Seven of their 12 victories came via shutout here in 2018. We mentioned the difficult schedule that Kentucky played all year. Purposely, Jeremy Miller replaced five cupcake wins with five difficult games to get them ready and poised to compete for a championship. Lagos sends it in. Lagos on the rebound. It's deflected. Castaneda fires, blocked by Atkins. Hamid. And Hamid runs out of space. Foul was called, I believe. Was it in the box or not? 78th minutes. If it's in the box, we'll have a penalty. And it is a penalty. So it'll be Guy Lima to take it. Now wait a minute, now they change it. So it's a corner kick instead. No, no corner, they're gonna, they're gonna chip it. It was right outside that box. You can see it right there. So Lagos. We'll take this free kick here. Here in the 78th minute. Lagos fires it low. Still danger for Kentucky as Castaneda gets on the ball. Castaneda with the fake as he goes to his left and the defense is there again. Now it's fired in by Franco. Lima trying to get on the ball and that back line again. I believe it was Vincent that time. Tyler Webb trying to get that through ball in. Taken back again by the Falcons. Credit the Falcons, they have not quit here today. Ball into the box, Franco, as it's deflected away. Souza. Falcons again getting it into the box, and on a couple of hops, Atkins will make the play on it. 79th minute, less than 11 and a half remaining. Kentucky is in the championship game as things stand right now. Souza hits that high in the air. 
Kentucky trying to stay on the ball. Good run on the near side for Isaiah Jones. And Jones loses it. Good defense there for the Falcons. Loya, who's come off the bench, getting the counterattack going. That's Franco sending it ahead, and that passes off. Looking for Castaneda. Another sub coming in for the Knights. Nathan Campbell will return. And he'll come in for Hunter Gullett. In for Kentucky, number nine, Nathan Campbell. Campbell, who scored the second goal of the game. Back out there after getting some rest. Here's Hamid. And a foul called. So a free kick to come. It'll be taken by Joshua Franco here in the 81st minute. A goal here for the Falcons. Make things more interesting, certainly. Souza now will take it. Souza sends it in. Hamid trying to get there. Souza chases as well. It's knocked away. It'll be a throw for the Falcons. This game wrapping up Pool B. As of now, Kentucky is the winner. They would knock out Trinity, who was hoping to go to the championship game for the second straight year. Falling to Pensacola last year, 1-0. Counterattack is on. It's flicked forward. And Doss Race will be the guy to get there first. 82nd minute. Less than nine to go. You can see and you can hear out there good communication from this Kentucky team. And at least as of right now, it looks like that hard work is going to pay off for the Knights. All that hard work in the beginning part of the season. Castaneda gets tripped up and another foul called will give Kansas another set piece opportunity. They have yet to do much with their set piece chances though here today. A couple of dangerous opportunities that Mike Atkins has made he will certainly earn the clean sheet if it stays that way, but at the same time, we expected more here today out of the Falcons here on the set piece. So Lima is there. Alonzo is also there, I believe. Lima's been the guy for the most part today. He gets it back from Alonzo, and that's going to go out of play. Atkins touched it. So we'll have a corner kick. 83rd minute. And another corner for Alonzo and the Falcons attack. Ball into the box. Castaneda had a hand on it, or had a leg on it, as did Hamid. Hamid tries to chase it down, but it's gonna go over the line. Inside the 84th minute now. Less than seven to play. Hunter Gullett will come back in. Shaking up player for Kentucky Christian is Tyler Webb. He's up quickly though, which is a good sign. Health plays such an important factor this time of the year. So Webb's going to come off as Gullet comes back in. Kentucky has to be exhausted after 110 minutes yesterday and an emotional game today. A foul called, and the Falcons 
committing the foul might be a card. And it is a card, and I believe it's on Thang. Don't forget, folks, stick around at 7.30. We're going to have Bob Jones and North Central, especially if you're a Kentucky fan. See who your team's going to play. That free kick is boomed into the box. Kentucky trying to stay on the ball, DeWald. That's headed forward by Campbell, and the offside flag is up there. Counter is on for the Falcons. They have shown no signs of letting up. They still want to try to get a goal here and try to make things interesting, give themselves a little momentum. Kentucky will no doubt enjoy that off day tomorrow, though, and hopefully get plenty of rest. Oh, no. That was Seth Bolin, who had a clear path but couldn't come up with the pass. Bolin on the ball again. Ball sent in by Gullitz, and again, they were looking for Campbell, I believe, over on that far side. Couldn't come up with it. 85th minute, throw for the Falcons coming back down on this side of the field. Lagos. And that'll be cleared out. So Kentucky, Certainly they'll take their counters if they come, as you see Bolin come forward. But for the most part, they are content to sit on this lead. They have done what they needed to do here today. They just need to do it for another four and a half minutes. Again, even if they allow one goal, that's okay. They still advance. Franco, good run by Franco, and that was Mike DeWald again. 86th minute, nearing four left to go. Final game of Pool B action. Kentucky and Trinity will both pick up victories in the tournaments, Kentucky and Trinity tied. And if you're just joining us, they'll be tied with four points. The first tiebreaker is goal differential, which as the score stands right now, Kentucky would have. The next tiebreaker down would also be goals allowed, and Kentucky would also have that, even if they allow a goal here. So all Kentucky has to do is get these three points, get this victory, and they will go to the championship game for the first time in program history. And it's anybody's guess who they're gonna play in Pool A. All kinds of crazy things can happen. Bob Jones will have a lot of momentum with their fans, even though it's a little further north. A lot of their fans traveled yesterday in the driving rain. The, Conditions are better today. I would expect them to be here. Castaneda looking for Hamid, and the offside flag is up, I believe. Yes, it is. 88th minute. Jeremy Miller's team, 45 goals coming into competition, third best in Division II. Second in shots per game at 16.3. First in shots on goal at 9. Their goals against average at 1.50 is third best, and their assist at 26 is fourth best. They are in the top five in all major statistical categories despite playing that tough schedule that we told you about. And losing Seth Bolin for a month. 
Injuries did not slow down the momentum this year for the Knights. That ball too far forward, it'll go out of play and it'll be a throw in for the Falcons. For the Falcons, their season will come to an end in disappointing fashion, no doubt, but still a winning record, 11-7-1. And and Coach Guy Fidala replacing a lot of the roster from last year, and same result, they were back in the national tournament. Their attack today has had its opportunities against Kentucky's defense. I don't want to make it sound like Kentucky completely took the Falcons out of their attack, but the passing has not always been the crispest and the uh, opportunities via set pieces. Kentucky has really held their own against the set piece chances for the Falcons. 90th minute, less than a minute to go. Kentucky can Start to run this out now. They're going to make a couple subs. Cameron Miller is going to come in. And Edward Hazi Kamana also getting set to come in. If they allow the subs to happen, they've been standing there for a good two minutes. Just in case they don't, I wanted to get them both mentioned in the broadcast because there's probably some parents out there who would like to hear those names. Another throw in. Less than 20 seconds left to go. Kansas Christian sends it forward. And for the first time in program history, the Kentucky Christian Knights will be in the Division II Men's Soccer Championship game. They win Pool B, winning today against the Falcons by a score of 2-0. Tip your cap to the Falcons of Kansas Christian. They leave with a record of 11-7-1, falling today 2-0. Kentucky Christian now 13-5-2, and, and they will await the winner of Pool A. Quick scoring recap for you. 36-minute corner kick for Kentucky. It was Reed Rousey with the header for his second goal of the year. And then in the second half, Campbell... Nathan Campbell with his second goal of the season, the senior from Nashville, Indiana. And Kentucky will advance to the championship game. They win Pool B via tiebreakers. Congratulations to the Knights. So we will wrap things up for now. Come on back at 7.30. We'll have the final game in Pool A. All kinds of stuff can happen in Pool A. But North Central, the one seed, controls its destiny. If they win over Bob Jones, they would meet Kentucky Christian. And again, we'll have that one for you in 30 minutes. Once again, your final score, it's Kentucky 2, Kansas nil. Thanks for watching, everybody. Come on back in 30 minutes.